This is the second video of our GCSE further maths, uh, mean and standard deviations. Okay, first thing we want to do is look at our types of data. So we have two main types of data. We have got what's called quantitative data. So quantitative data is basically numerical data. So it could be a number can be assigned to it. So things like shoe size, height, speed, time, anything like that. And the next one is what's called qualitative data. So qualitative data is data which you have to describe in words. So uh, it's your holiday destinations, eye color, uh, maybe strength of feeling, all of these sorts of things. Next thing we have got is discrete data. So discrete data will have exact values. So shoe size again, use that same example. Number of people. So people, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five people. You're not going to have uh, six and a half people or anything uh, like that. And then the last one is continuous data. So the way I remember continuous data is data which has to be measured. So things such as height. So say you measure somebody's height and you measure, you think you've measured quite accurately, you've said they are uh, 165.52 uh, centimeters. You could have gone a wee bit further. You could have said 165.523192 and so on centimeters. So data that has to be measured and at some stage has been rounded. Uh, so here, I've given it to two decimal places, so I had to write that. So if you can measure something and you potentially could have measured it more accurately, then you're looking at continuous data. Okay, next thing we're going to look at is grouping data. So there's various ways that we can uh, group data. <coughs> so first of all, uh, this one says the number of liters, L, and we've got all the different boundaries. So what this means here, we've got... Um, zero is less than or equal to your number of liters and which is less than 10. So what's important here is we understand what the boundaries are. So you can't just look at one interval to discover what the boundaries are. You've got to also look at the next interval. So this one goes from zero to 10 and then this one goes to 10 to 15. This one goes from 15 to 25. So the cutoff point between these is for both of them is 10. So the lower boundary of the upper boundary of this one, sorry, is 10. And also the lower boundary of this one is 10, the upper boundary of this one is 15, and the lower boundary of this one is 15. So to get the midpoints, all you do is you add what the lower boundary and the upper boundary is and divide by 2. So the lower boundary was 0, upper boundary was 10. 0 plus 10 divided by 2 is 5. So put a 5 in here. Next one, is it lower boundary is 10, upper boundary is 15. 10 plus 15 and divide by 2 is going to give you 12.5. Next one is 15 plus 25, then divide by 2. It's going to give you 17.5. And then this one's a wee bit different. So this one would have had a width of 5, width of 5, width of five, a width of 10. Sorry, it would have been for this one. So there's a mistake in that one. That should have been um, 15 plus 25, and then divide by 2 is going to give you 20. In actual fact, for this one, so I haven't spotted that one, made a wee mistake. Very easy to do, folks, there. So um, just be careful. They do not have to have the same widths every time. So that one has a width of 10. This last one is from 15 up to 45. Uh, sorry, 25 up to 45. At uh, 25 and 45, you're going to get 65 divided by 2. You're going to get 32.5. So that's what we should have uh, for, for our uh, midpoints. You could then use your midpoints, as we'll see later on in this video, uh, to find an, an estimate for the mean. We are doing the same thing in the next example. So we're looking and thinking, what are our boundaries, first of all, and what are our midpoints? So the first one, this goes from 0 to 9, and the next one goes from 10 to 18. So that means the boundary of this one is going to be 9 0.5 halfway between the 9 and the 10. Likewise, this one goes from 18 and then it jumps to 19, so it's going to be 18.5 is your boundary. And this one goes from 25 and then 26, so it's going to be 25.5. So we're going to add in the boundaries. The boundaries really are going to be, get rid of all of that so that we can see, and if the boundaries really are going to be 5.5 to 9.5, and then it's going to be 9.5 to 18.5, then it's going to be 18.5 to 25.5, and then this one would be 25.5, and you're going to be in the 50 until you're 50.5.
And then the midpoints, so again to get the midpoints, you add the 5.5 and the 9.5 and you divide by 2. So you add 5.5, 9.5, divide by 2, you're going to get 7.5. And then I'll just do the rest of these, that's going to be 14. 18.5 plus 25.5 divided by 2 is going to be 22. 25.5 plus 50.5 is going to give you, and then divided by 2 is going to give you 38. And the last of these type, this is age. Now age is one that they're very fond of uh, because it's slightly different. Now if you are um, from 0 to 4, your boundaries are 0 to, and you're 4 years old until the very second you turn 5. And then this one, from 5 to 11, you're 11 years old until the very second you turn 12. And then you're 12 to 18, so you're 18 until the very second you turn 19. So again, the boundary is 19. This one is 19 to, and you're 24 until the very second you turn 25. So there's your, your boundaries. In the midpoint, add your boundaries and then divide by 2. 0 plus 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. 5 plus 12 divided by 2 is going to be 17 divided by 2 is 8.5. 12 plus 19 would be 31, and then divide by 2 is 15.5. 19 plus 25, and then divide by 2 would be 22. Okay, why it is so important that we understand our boundaries is that quite often um, things will be given in boundary in boundary form, and we'll, we will need to be able to use them. Uh, you need to be able to find the midpoints of those particular boundaries to find an estimate of the mean. So we're going to look now at uh, finding mean and standard deviation from frequency distribution. distribution. The first example has got uh, clearly defined x values. The second example, as you can see, has not got clearly defined values, so you'll have to find the midpoint of these particular boundaries before you can get started. But the first one, a wee bit more straightforward. You've got your number of cousins. Um, I'm going to just put in brackets, this is your like, equivalent of your x, your frequency, this is your f. And what we're going to have to introduce is an fx column and an fx squared column and we'll talk through why that is okay so you can see here your formula for your mean x bar is sigma fx so that's when you have the frequency times the corresponding x value and you add up all of those up and divide it by your sum of all your f's so your sum of all your f's means all of your frequencies added up your formula for standard deviation when you've got frequencies involved, is the square root of sigma f x squared divided by sigma f minus your mean squared. And or, can you add in, and this is just a more, a longer way of writing it, but the one I prefer, to be honest, it was sigma f x squared divided by sigma f minus, and your mean, as we have over here, is sigma f x divided by sigma f, and then that is squared and it is the square root of that whole thing. So that's what you've got for your your S, your standard deviation, and then your uh, your standard deviation and your mean. Okay, so when you look at this example, uh, we're going to need the summations of three rows as it is. Normally it's done in columns, but it's rows in this case. You're going to have your sigma F, your sigma FX, and then your last thing you need is your sigma FX squared. So to get your fx in, it is just the 5 times the 12, so it's 60. It is then the 6 times the 15, which is just going to be 90. Next one is going to be the 7 times the, tw the 3, which is 21. 8 times the 5, which is 40. And the 9 times the 8, which is 72. Okay, we have a trickier to get the uh, fx one. So to get this one, for example, you've got to square the x value. So it's going to be uh, 5 squared and then multiplied by your f, which is 12. And 5 squared times your 12 then, whatever that's going to work out to be. And, and I've just worked these out to be 30. The next one then is, sorry, 300. The next one is going to be uh, 6 squared times 15 and whatever that works out to be and so on. So just fill those in. So reading along, we've got 300, 540, and the next one's going to be 147, the next one is going to be 320, and the next one is going to be 648. And when you fill in your rows, sigma f, count up your rows, sorry, the sum of your all your f's is 43, the sum of your fx row is 283, the sum of your fx squared row is 1955. 
Do not be surprised if this one in particular is a very large number. It's not particularly large here. Sometimes it can be very large, five, six digits maybe. Uh, and then we're ready to fill in. So just scroll down a wee bit to give myself a bit of room. I will find the mean first of all. The mean is easier of the two. It is right down the formula. Sigma fx divided by sigma f. So your mean is 283 divided by 43. And when I put that into my calculator, I got 6.58. And have we any units? This is number of cousins, so we'll just say that's two decimal places. Obviously, you can't have 6.58 cousins, but it's a mean, so a means can't have decimals in them. Uh, okay, your standard deviation formula, S is equal to sigma fx squared divided by sigma f minus, and I'm going to use the version I like, sigma fx over sigma f at squared and it's a square root of that whole thing then we fill that in that's going to be one nine five five for your sigma fx squared sigma f was 43 and then minus brackets and sigma fx was 283 sigma f is 40 43 oops it's a mess 43 that gets squared and then the whole thing gets square rooted Use your calculator using your square root button, your fraction button, your brackets, your square function, and you should get 1.47 to 2 decimal places. Last example for this video. And here, this is one of the ones where we have to use our midpoints. So... It is an estimate of both the mean and the standard deviation we're finding here because you're having to make the assumption that anyone in this interval assume takes the midpoint. So the first thing I want to say is the midpoint, uh, we're going to call it x. So the boundaries, the lower boundary of this one is 0 and the upper boundary is 10 because it starts at 10 at this one. So your midpoint, add the two of those, add the 0 and the 10 divided by 2 and you're going to get 5. Next one, you're going to get 15. Next one, you're going to get 25. Next one, you're going to get 35 and 45. So there weren't any tricks there. They were all the same width, which made it nice. You need to add in your other two columns, your fx column and your fx squared column. And again, don't be too worried if these get fairly big. I'm going to have to use a narrower pen here because these do get very big, this one. I'll zoom in a wee bit as well. So in this one, you've got uh, 15 times 5 is 75. 15 times 5 is 75. I'll go a little bit bigger than this. 75 and your fx squared would be uh, 15 times 5 times 5, which would work out to be 375. The next one is going to be 7 times 15, which is going to be 105. And then this one is going to be 1575. The next one is going to be 200. And then the fx squared is going to be 5,000. The fx for the next one would be 770. And the fx squared is going to be 26950. And the fx for the next one is going to be 1575. And then it's going to be 70875. And that is the hard bit of it done. You can see here I've just added in uh, summations at the bottom, some of my f column, some of my fx column, some of my fx squared column, and then we're just going to fill those in. So if you add up your f column, you're going to get 87. Add up your fx column, you're going to get 2725. Add up your fx squared column, you're going to get 104775. Okay, and then all we're left to do is find our mean and our standard deviation. So again, write down your formula and then fill it in. So we've got all the information we need here. You can see it. So your mean is equal to sigma fx divided by sigma f. So it is going to be 2725 divided by 87. And when you work that out, you're going to get 31.32 and that's going to be kilograms and that was to two decimal places. For your next one, your standard deviation, just call it S, 
it is equal to sigma fx squared divided by sigma f minus our sigma fx divided by sigma f and that is squared and we're doing the square root of that whole thing. So you just fill in and again you're using your square root button and your fraction button and your uh, brackets and also your squaring button on your calculator to do all of that. But it is really just a calculator exercise from here on in. So making sure you're taking your time and correctly filling everything in and writing everything down as it should be. That should be in the square there. And then just press equals on your calculator. And when I did that, I got 14.94 kilograms. And that was again to two decimal places.